Hey guys, welcome back to JD Mods. Today we're going to be finishing off the inside. We have to do the brake lines, the exhaust, and a few other little things, mainly the brake lines and the exhaust though. Then hopefully we can fire up the inside in today's video and maybe take it for a test drive. If you hear any chirping in the background of the video, it's because there's all these little chickens in the garage. We're working over there. They're hanging out over here. I think there's around 17 chickens. So if you wondered, that's what they are. And the little chickens. Alright, so first let's start off with the brake line install, as I just kind of want to get it out of the way. Um, so this here is a Civic proportioning valve from like the late 90s and lots of other generation Civics. So as you can see here, it's the stock prop valve I got from a junkyard. And all of these things, um, let's come over here for a second. All of those are Russell 641431 fittings. Therefore, M10 by 1 inverted flare to 3AN male. So this will allow us to run our 3AN braided lines for all of our brake lines. There's our prop valve mounted. I meant mounted it just on the driver's side shock tower, pretty out of the way. And now what I'm going to do is start making up some of the lines. You can see I have two 3AN fittings planned out on the master cylinder right there. And then I've got my proportioning valve and then on every brake you can see here I have a brand new Civic uh, flex line. It doesn't mount to the inside strut because there's no mounting point. But what I've done is just used, if I can show you guys, there it is right there. I've just used kind of a clamp mount to mount it there. Then there's the 3AN adapter. So I'm just going to go ahead and start making up some of these brake lines and I'll show you when I'm done. So it's been a while since my last clip, so sorry if this is a little choppy, I kind of forget what I was talking about. But we just finished off the brake lines, they're all bled, brakes work very nicely. I also went ahead and tossed on this old bumper we had laying around. Clearly it's not in very good condition as you can see over here. But it doesn't matter, this is just for test driving, taking the car to get safetyed. And when we actually put it on the road and go to car shows, we'll put different hood and bumper on. As you can see, it also has a hood. The underside of this hood is very good, but it has tons of stone chips on the top, which you will see in a little bit. So now that that all is done, it is time to get started on the exhaust. So here's all the exhaust components I got for the K-Site. I'll quickly run through them with you guys. Um, I got most of these components from Lyle's Stainless Exhaust Manufacturing. Uh, this is not a stainless exhaust, this is just aluminized steel, pretty much every component. But they also sell stainless. This is their, their catalog they sent me. Um, it was really good pricing and I'm in Canada and they are just a couple hours from me in Burlington, Ontario. So if you're from Ontario or Canada, they have really good prices and really good shipping prices. So I'd highly recommend going with them. Not sponsored in any way, just uh, seem to be very good mandrel bend products. So let's work from left to right here. I'll show you what I bought for the exhaust. We got a couple hangers here. Uh, these ones come with some grommets and uh, mounting holes. And then these ones are just hangers to reuse these stock mounting holes. I just bought a couple of those because they're only a couple bucks each. These are some older grommets off of the Civic and the inside itself. And an older hanger as well. Then this is my uh, three bolt flange. This is a two and a half inch flange to mount to the K-tuned header. This was an Amazon purchase. This is a Magnaflow high flow cat. You can see the honeycomb inside is a lot um, thinner, I guess you could say, than a normal cat. So it is a high flow catalytic converter. We're still putting one on this car to keep it nice and carb compliant. And uh, this muffler here, is a walker muffler. This is not from Lyle Stainless Steel. This is just a standard issue muffler. I got a massive muffler because we're going to try and keep this thing a sleeper. Keep it nice and quiet as well. Um, and this is from Canadian Tire. This is just a chrome two and a half inch turn down tip. Uh, this will look very nice and kind of sleek but also a bit showy offy on the K site. I'm not really sure how to say that. Then all this mandrel tubing we got from Lyle Stainless, let me move this over here a little bit so you can see better. 
Uh, this is their resonator, just a two and a half inch straight through resonator. It was only about 15 bucks, so I tried to pick it up. Can't hurt. Uh, we got two 90 degree mandrel bends, two 45s, 180 to bend. And we got two straight pieces of tubing on the right here that are four feet long. And this, of course, is all two and a half inch outer diameter. Um, so to weld it, I just have to do butt, butt joints, kind of. So I picked up this one little piece from Canadian Tire of two and a half ID to ID because I'm no professional welder. So this will just help me if I slide it on. I can slide on another pipe, which makes welding a lot easier. Less chance of leaks. So that's everything we're dealing with. Now I'm going to go ahead and weld it up. So I'm going to pretty much tack everything together first. And my first move is going to be to put my little small high flow cat right onto the three bolt flange so that the cat is right behind the header. So here we are under the car, there's the K-tuned header going to that flange and cat we just welded on there, tacked on sorry. So now I thought I would show you guys a little technique that I'm going to try and use. I'm no professional exhaust maker but that's what I'm going to do and see if it works. So I have two jack stands holding up the resonator with a 45 degree just jammed in it since it's uh, press fit piping. So as you can see, the 45 is required to go around the gas tank, just like that. So I'm holding it in place. You can see it's kind of the same height. It doesn't really matter too much for now. But now what I'm going to do is grab my measuring tape. And I'm going to measure from just inside the cat before the taper to before the weld on here. Since the pipe fits in between the two, the other benefit of that is it leaves me some wiggle room. So I'm going to measure that cut a length of straight piping and shove it in there. There's the center pipe all welded in. So we got the cat, then I got a nice long section of pipe, tack welded on to the resonator right there. And then continuing down, I did a bit more work. So we have the 45 degree right there. And the rest will probably be easier to show you from the back. Here we are at the back of the car. We got that 45 coming from the resonator. Uh, and I just tacked it on to another 45 pointing the other way to essentially do the offset around the gas tank right here and then I put that 45 going to a 90 which is kind of on an angle it's kind of hard to see and then the 90 goes to another 90 which goes into the muffler now this car is very difficult the muffler is not at the very end of the car I'll try and go outside the car right now and show you what I mean there is the exhaust hole. Oh, bear with me, guys. The exhaust hole on this car is right there, and the muffler goes back in there. So what I did was just prop up the muffler with these pieces of wood right here. And so the best way for me to show you is just inside this little hole right here. There's the muffler. Uh, I just saw, just showed you guys all the pipes just through there, tacked up to the muffler. Sorry, it's so hard to see. I'll show you without the wood when it's all tacked up. So now my last job, oh, a little bit of smoke there, is to connect the muffler to my tailpipe right here, and then just set up all the hangers. I'm gonna try and utilize all the stock hanger locations. And then, once it's all tacked up, I'll take it off the insight, and I'll show you guys the final exhaust. So here's the exhaust all tacked up. I was gonna show you guys on the car, but it was really hard to see. So basically there's the tip. I had to cut a second hole in the bumper. I tried using the stock one, but the angles that I was using with just wasn't working. So here's the entire exhaust all tacked up. I took it out of the car very gently to ensure that none of my angles got all messed up. So now, again, using my uh, $250 flux core welder, I'm going to tack, or sorry, I'm going to fully weld all of this. I'm going to take my time. Hopefully there's no leaks. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm using these rings, it's just because with this welder, and just for lack of leaking, and just makes it a lot easier to weld. So uh, I know ideally they're, they're not 
super aesthetically pleasing and they also won't make it a super high performance exhaust but for what we're doing it's perfect so i'm going to go ahead and weld this all up now reinstall it on the car and show you guys the final product So there's the exhaust all welded up. I welded on all the hangers and all the way around every single joint. My flux core welder is not the prettiest thing as you can see when I get up close here. But it should be fairly leak free and I did scratch it up a little bit with a wire brush so it will rust but it's okay. Hopefully when I'm done school maybe I can do a stainless exhaust with a TIG welder um, after I'm done paying for school stuff. So there is the completed inside exhaust. We're going to go ahead and bolt it up with some gasket maker on the flange and then put the hangers on and I will show you the completed project. There's the exhaust fully installed. There is the tip. That's how the inside exhaust looks from the outside. Fairly sleek but you can also tell it's upgraded. And I'll quickly show you guys underneath the car. So there is the two exhaust hangers going back to my massive muffler which barely fits then I got the 290s to go underneath the rear uh, cross member piece and then you got your 245 to go around the gas tank and then just the resonator going to the cat and the exhaust hanger using the stock location as well right in the middle so it's very secure and when you shake it from vibration doesn't hit anything and it can have a lot of play. There's also a flex pipe on the stock K tuned 421 swap header. So now we're going to go ahead and start it on the jack stands. And if everything looks good, we're going to, uh, for the first time in a long time, put it on the ground and drive it out of the garage. Alright, so first I'm going to prime the fuel system to make sure it's good. So I like to make sure in these early stages of testing that we don't have any fuel leaks. That's pretty much the worst thing that could happen because it could cause a fire, obviously. So I'm just checking all my connections in the engine bay. I don't smell any fuel on my finger, so I'm going to go ahead and start her up. And we'll hear the exhaust for the very first time together. Are you ready? There is the K-Site project all finished up. I'm sure there's going to be a few little things to work out, but we just washed the layer of dust off of it, and that is going to be the end of the K-Site build videos. The next videos for this car will hopefully be driving and maybe some racing later this season. Let me do one final walk around. Still needs a bit of body work, but relatively pretty, pretty clean. It is aluminum, so it's not rusty. There's the new exhaust you saw me install in today's video. And yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the build series for this car. And I hope you guys are looking forward to some driving series as well. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.